Welcome back to Dunkley. That's the federal seat. Frankston is where we are right now. And we are here. Oh, thank you very much. That's very nice. We're here at the Cheeky Squires. It's nice to get a little chant like that. I do appreciate it. We're here with uh, several of the candidates who will be putting themselves forward on Saturday in the by-election that is here. Of course, representing the Libs is uh, Nathan Conroy. Uh, we've got uh, Kristen Abram from the Libertarian Party and also Mackenzie Heath from the Australian Democrats. The uh, Labor Party and Greens chose not to be here. But thankfully, we've got uh, George. I think he's got a question now. Come on over, my friend. What do you got? Very grateful to be here, Paul. Thank you. Um, as both... Uh, potential federal member and a local voice for the six, uh, what is your perception on what some deem in the media is an out of control youth crisis occurring in various parts of our country? Uh, do you believe this is so or otherwise? Okay. Nathan. I grew up in social housing, George, knowing um, the most disengaged youth, um, good things and bad things. And what we need to do is we need to spend more money and proactive in, um, uh, initiatives and programs to make sure that our in disengaged youth are not targeted on the streets by crime gangs and organizations that have uh, prey on their vulnerabilities. But what we need to do as well is um, hold this state and federal government to account. They want to increase the age of criminality from 10 to 14. And all that's going to do is set a green light for these organized gangs to prey on our most vulnerable people in our community and that is our young. All right, Kristen. While I uh, don't identify as white or privileged, I definitely identify as the youth of today. And the reason I am standing for Dunkley is because my future um, is something that looks grim. And in terms of the, the future that I want for my children and for myself, I have to stand up and I have to make a change. So we are the first generation after World War II to have it worse than our parents. And why wouldn't the, the kids of today that don't want to be stuck in the rat race, that are constantly trying to keep a roof over their head and constantly trying to, you know, feed themselves and be stuck in this consistent circle of government price gouging, look at their, their options and go to crime? We need to make a better future. We need to make a, a more prosperous Australia. We need to ensure that the youth of today want to contribute to Australia by giving them the opportunities, because right now their opportunities are stifled. So, yes, I do believe that there is a youth crisis, um, and I have chosen to go down this path to fight for my future. Not everyone is given the same opportunity as me, and I'm out there fighting for them too. If you don't win the election, can you come back as a panellist on my show? <laughs> you're very good. You're very, you're very good. Uh, Mackenzie? So, I wonder how many people here have said the words, oh, where are their parents? You know, in, when you hear about these uh, crime sprees and the young people. Now, youth crime's nothing new, but we've been talking about a cost of living crisis. People are doing it tough. A lot of these people might come from single parent households, and there's a fair chance that parents working two jobs just to get by. So, as I said, youth crime's nothing new. Yes, we need to come up with new ways, as Nathan, I think, said, you know, around engaging these kids and providing positive uh, role models for them. But Let's also understand this is a bit of a, a side effect of the current economic situation. Good stuff. All right. Hello. Lovely to see you. All right. Uh, we've got uh, Trudy here. Trudy, what's your question? As president of the Frankston Brecky Club, I've witnessed since the 2022 federal election families and our less fortunate people in Caram Downs and Frankston North are struggling to survive, let alone thrive. I want to ask you what you do if you're in Albo's shoes right now. Right. Nathan, I'll start with you. Look, since 2022, people are worse off under this government. It's simple facts. Food banks in Frankston North, Carum Downs, the community support Frankston are at record levels. More people are becoming um, homeless than since I came to Australia now than ever before. When mortgage rates um, are through the roof 12 in the last uh, 12 months, and, uh, or since the, um, the current government. And then you have electricity, gas, everything going up. People are hurting. As I said earlier, people are choosing between bills and food. And people in Mount Eliza and Frankston South are now seeking help at food banks. And instead of spending $40 million advertising tax changes, we should be putting into the most vulnerable people within our community. Thank you. Kristen, I'll ask you uh, the same question here. It's an extension in and around cost of living, but uh, yeah, what's your answer? There's no denying that there is a homelessness crisis down on the peninsula uh, and that there are people struggling to feed themselves. There was actually people sleeping rough at Oliver's Hill and just after the pandemic, the council told them to move on. 
Imagine that, the council telling them to move on rather than looking to help them. And Nathan's completely right that there is, um, the food banks are out of control at the moment. There is one charity in Seaford at the moment that is feeding about 1,500 people a fortnight. What are we doing in terms of ensuring that the homelessness and the cost of living is at a um, better place for us to ensure that we're taking care of our most vulnerable? And the Libertarian have, Party have solutions to those problems. We're not fixing the symptoms, we're fixing the problem. And that is by cutting fuel excise, that is by raising the tax-free threshold, which is actually quite similar to his policy, raise it to $45,000 and have a flat 20% tax on that. We reduce the cost of taxes that end up on our groceries, our clothes, all of the other goods. And we will see that everyone in our community, as well as Australia, will thrive. All right, thank you. All right, Darren, I'll get you to ask a question or I'll get you to ask it to Mackenzie first and then we'll work our way around. OK, well, this, this uh, question is, is uh, um, to the whole panel. And uh, I guess one thing, congratulations, guys, and, and the best of luck on the weekend. Um, we've heard about quite general aspirational ideas about how we can address and help Dunkley. What I'm interested in is if you're successful on, on uh, Saturday, what will you take to the parliament that really addresses some of the nuanced issues in Frankston and it's directly focused on Dunkley rather than a more general and national approach to the cost of living. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, yeah. so one thing that uh, I think really needs addressing is gambling reform. Uh, I think uh, pretty broadly there was a lot of support for Peter Murphy as a, a great local member doing good work in the community. Now, her legacy is some of the great work she did around gambling reform. That's currently sitting on Albo's desk gathering dust. 31 recommendations, ready to go. He's talking about consultation now. It's ready to go. It needs to happen. So much money out of our community gets ripped out and goes to the operators of pokies and to sports betting agencies. That needs to happen really quickly. So that's one of the nuanced approaches. Good stuff. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Sadly, that's it for questions, but I want to give you all a chance to, to give a final pitch here about, uh, about the way that it works. We'll start again. You get to go straight from answering to, uh, to a final pitch. Give us the 30 seconds of why we're going to vote Australian Democrat on Saturday. Look, I think if you look at the current political landscape, Paul, there's a lot of people standing on either side just shouting at each other. We've seen that at the pre-poll booths over the last few days and I've been really frustrated to see that. What the Australian Democrats offer, we, <laughs> my sister actually coined the phrase the sensible middle as she's handing out uh, how to vote cards at the polling booth. We just need someone in the middle with a rational voice to take the sting out of all these arguments and just come at it from an evidence-informed evidence point of view. Uh, and we just really need to get some sensibility. Political accountability, these, you know, I hate to say it, but the Liberal and Labor Party, they're just all about self-interest. We need somebody in there to keep the bastards honest, as the saying goes. All right, round of applause for the Australian Democrats. Mackenzie Heath. All right, Kristen, the Libertarian pitch, go. As a Libertarian candidate, I understand that the two-party preferred system and Labor and Liberal have put us in this situation. I am fighting for my future. I am fighting for your children's future and my children's future. I want to ensure that we have a prosperous Australia, that we are thriving, that we are not consistently price gouged by the government, uh, and we are able to enjoy each other's company. We're not relying on uh, social uh, divisiveness perpetrated by Labor and Liberal. We are one community, we are one Australia, and I want what's best for our community. All right, good stuff, thank you. <laughs> Nathan, uh, what's the Liberal pitch for Saturday? Over the past few weeks, we have been speaking to people right around the electorate of Dunkley, and people are hurting. Cost of living is out of control, housing is out of control, and health is out of control. We have crisis in all these three different things. People are struggling right now, as I said, Paul, choosing between bills and food. I'm going to take the fight to Canberra because we need to send Labour a message because we don't need a $14 tax break in, in five months' time. We need cost of living relief now. We need to, cost of living relief. We need community infrastructure. Metro Melbourne and Geelong. People are going to Geelong for the first time. We want to put Frankston City and Mornington Peninsula on the map. We need to build more infrastructure, not less. And he has cut... His government has cut $3.9 billion from Victorian infrastructure, and we need more infrastructure, not less. As our community is growing, we need to put Frankston City, Morning Peninsula, on the map. Good stuff. Thank you very much, Nathan. <laughs> Please keep it going for all of our candidates. Very... Thank you for being part of it. So, they mentioned the pre-polls. That's where I was today. And I didn't ask them which way they were voting, but why. When did you make your decision? 
Oh, probably when I was 18 years old. Does <laughs> that help you? You've been one way the whole way? Yeah, I don't change my mind. Um, look, the person I voted for, I've always voted for that party, so I knew. I always know every election, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're the yeah same? I'm the same. Yeah. Well, I, look, back in the day, years and years ago, look, I voted Labor, you know, but, um, you know, just not now, not anymore. <laughs> I'm done. So what was it about, uh, um, what, what are the issues that made you help decide which way you go? Cost of living, the main one yeah. in the area. The things that mattered to me, I kind of went with that. So like community was like number one for me and yeah, cost of living was like very close after that. Issues wise, what, what, what makes you vote the way that you vote? Uh, I think I voted for people that supported our local area, like Frankston. Um, uh, that, that was the one thing that caught my eye. Mm. Oh, definitely the cost of living. That's across. Everyone's aware of affecting everyone. So if that got better, then, yeah, that's what I'd like to see. Do you believe that there's one side more than the other that's got an answer for that? Oh, I think everyone's trying to probably come up with an answer. I don't think anyone has the right answer necessarily. I think it's something we'll figure out as we go along and as it evolves. People are sick of governments, councils, whoever, just telling them what to do. What's the most important thing that you think is about Dunkley, about what you would like to see come out of the election regardless of who wins? Um, that everyone's working together. I think that's more important than anything else. On the polling booths, we will get to a real debate in a moment's time, but a little moment I have to apologise to the man I kept calling Mackenzie. His name is Heath. It is Heath Mackenzie from the Australian Democrats. I apologise.